Hello students, myself Dr. Sachin Kapoor and I wish you a very warm welcome to this session of uh, Zoology Lectures. The topic of our discussion today is uh, cardiac muscles. Cardiac word as you know is related to heart. So when we say cardiac muscles, that means these muscles are present in the wall of heart. In this diagram, I have shown a very simplified version of the heart wall. The heart wall consists of three layers, innermost endocardium, which is simple squamous epithelial cells, middle myocardium, myo word is related to muscles. Myocardium is the thickest layer of the heart wall. The outermost layer is the epicardium or the visceral pericardium. Outermost layer of the heart wall is pericardium. Pericardium consists of outer fibrous pericardium, inner serous pericardium. The serous pericardium further has two layers, that is inner visceral pericardium, which is called epicardium, right? So this is the heart wall. And as I said, that myocardium is the thickest layer of heart wall. This myocardium has cardiac muscles. This diagram is of cardiac muscles. Right Now, cardiac muscles are striated like skeletal muscles. When we say striated, that means these show alternate light and dark bands. As you can see is this in this diagram, it shows the alternate light and dark bands. Cardiac muscle fibers are uninucleate. They have a single nucleus as we have shown in this diagram. These are branched. This shows the branching pattern. Right, Adjacent cardiac muscle fibers are connected by intercalated disc. Please remember, it's an important feature of cardiac muscle fibers that is intercalated disc. Intercalated disc has gap junctions. It allows quick spreading of the cardiac impulse. As you can see here, we know that cardiac muscle fibers, they are capable of generating electrical signals. So this cardiac impulse travels quickly from one cardiac muscle fiber to another through intercalated disc. Other important feature of cardiac muscle fibers is that these do not get fatigued. These do not get tired. These use fatty acids for energy. Their lipid content is high. So when they are using fatty acids for energy, these do not get fatigued. Cardiac muscle fibers are involuntary. That means they are not under your conscious control. Then how do cardiac muscle fibers contract? We know that heart is myogenic in case of vertebrates and mollusks. Vertebrates includes humans also. So in case of humans, the heart is myogenic. When we use the term myogenic, what does it mean? Myo refers to muscles and genic refers to generation. That means certain cardiac muscle fibers, they get modified to form pacemaker of the heart. The pacemaker of the heart is what? SA node. So pacemaker of heart, that is SA node or the sinoatrial node consists of modified cardiac muscle fibers which are capable of generating the electrical signals. So cardiac muscle fibers are involuntary. They contract in response to signals from the SA node, which is located inside the wall of the heart. Cardiac muscle fibers, they are regulated by autonomic nervous system, ANS. We know that vagus nerve supplies the SA node. Vagus nerve releases acetylcholine, which hyperpolarizes SA node and decreases the heart rate. So that was about cardiac muscle fibers. Let's have a quick recap of what we have discussed. Cardiac muscle fibers, they are striated or striped. That is, they show alternate light and dark bands. These are branched. These are uninucleate. These do not get fatigued because their lipid content is high. And a very important feature is intercalated disc. Intercalated disc has gap junctions which allow quick spreading of the cardiac impulse. And one important point that cardiac muscle fibers are involuntary. So students, that was all about cardiac muscle fibers. In our coming lecture, we'll discuss about smooth muscle fibers.